Okay, this is a gasoline internal combustion engine. It's called a hybrid piston rotary engine. It is a four stroke. It has no cylinder head, it has no crankshaft, it has no poppet valves. This is the rotary valve that feeds the, the cylinder. Through the center of the shaft, You've got a port. Let's take this side of the housing off so you can see what's going on inside here. Okay, there's a piston on this side and there's a piston on that side. It's a posed piston engine. Instead of having a crankshaft on each side, as they did back in World War II, and still there's a few engines out now that are gaining a lot of popularity. They're posed piston engines. This one has a simpler mechanism, a lot cheaper to manufacture than a crankshaft. Each uh, one of these would equal a crankshaft. And you've got rollers on one on each side of the cam, cam fowler. It follows the cam profile of the housing. Can't get any simpler than that. So each connecting rod is connected to a cam follower. Cam follower follows the contour from this point to this point is taking in the air fuel mixture. Okay, this port here is getting ready to be in alignment with that port right there. As it's rotating, the pistons are moving apart open, 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 oh, it's closed. So it's taken in the air fuel mixture and closed. Now, that was 100 degrees because it had to move that far for each roller to end up on a quadrant. This would, is broken into four quadrants. But it's moved more than 90 degrees because each one of them, because of the, the angle of the cam follower, it had to do that. So it's giving a little bit more breath. It's getting a, a 100, 100 degrees of air fuel mixture. So it's a longer duration of time to fill the cylinder. Now in 80 degrees, it's compressing it, which is pretty quick. Okay, then you've got the power stroke. The same port is in alignment with the spark plug, which goes right in here. You got the power stroke. Bang! Pistons are pushing apart. It's got a gradual curvature where it's the momentum of the, this would be like a flywheel. So it's propelling it around like a crankshaft and it's pushing from both sides. It's got a longer torque arm than a crankshaft would be on this engine would be an inch and a half offset. Small little crankshaft. It's a three inch bore and three inch stroke. Each one of these is performing an inch and a half, inch and a half. So it's got the, the, we've gotten the power stroke and now the exhaust is getting ready to open. So you got 80 degrees to exhaust the cylinder. And you're back to square one. So you've done all that in one revolution instead of two on a crankshaft engine. It's much simpler. Oh my God, it's, it's not even close. It's so simple that a lot of people can't understand it because they want to make it more complex than it is. Now you got the air cooled, the cooling of the fins on the, this is the equivalent of a crankshaft. They're, they're journaled here. These are sealed, sealed bearings that go in here. Okay, you got one right here. See that port opening and closing? Boy, that takes a lot of energy to open and close it. Conventional engine, you couldn't do that. You've got a poppet valve and a very tense spring. This has got no valve float. It's not possible for the valves to float because it's a rotary valve. Rotary valve right here. What we're going to do is pull this off to where you can see what's going on here. But let me warn you, there's no crankshaft in this engine. There's no cylinder head and two pistons operating the same cylinder 
and then combustion is takes place in the center of the engine and let me pull the pennies off of this thing I'll show you the rotary valve here we've got the intake the exhaust spark plug screws in there I'm going to pull this housing off to where you can see what's going on there and verify that there is indeed no crankshaft now each piston is connected through a connecting rod to a cam follower right there now the rollers there's one right there one on each end it pivots right in the center right there and there these are hybrid rotary uh, uh, hybrid sealed bearings that have uh, ceramic balls in them lucky little devils here we at uh, top dead center the pistons are contracted this is the port that feeds the inside of the cylinder now as it uh, rotates it's going to open up by passing by the port for the intake and as the piston is spread apart in 100 degrees that valve will have been, been closed it's taken in the air fuel mixture now it's getting ready to compress it so 80 degrees it's back at top dead center how to do that in half a stroke it's back in the same position not actually the port is on the opposite side right now and it's in alignment with the spark plug you can see there how that port opens and closes it's easier for me to say but anyway you can see it better right here opening and closing as the rotor is passing by the port so that's in alignment with the spark plug you got the power stroke okay these uh, the combustion is forcing these pistons violently apart from both sides and it forces from a large torque arm it's not like a small little journal on a crankshaft it has an enormous amount of leverage we're going to see exactly how much put this thing on a dyno and see what kind of torque it generates, but it should be substantial. Okay, now this port is coming in alignment with the exhaust port. It's opening and closing in 80 degrees, so you're back at square one. All four strokes, every revolution, no crankshaft, no cylinder head. No parasitic valves, uh, as in a uh, poppet valve uh, valve train. There is no cylinder head because each piston is the opposing piston cylinder head. So you got very little in the way of parts. You've got uh, two cam followers, four rollers, two connecting rods, two pistons. Now where's the rest of it? Where's the radiator and everything? Uh, okay, it's got air fins on the cylinder now the air portion is on the center of the rotor and these separators high temperature kydex plastic divide the oil bathed portion of on the exterior from the air cooled the fins the uh, airfoils move the air through one end of the housing and out the other through these ports right here so it's very simple you've got uh, it looks like it's missing a lot of parts but it's just each part is performing various functions and it's just so simple if you can't understand it just wind the tape back think about it 